John Scott was a Scottish pharmacist who was enchanted with the work of Benjamin Franklin. He decided to create an award, and uh, that award would be bequeathed by the city of Philadelphia every year to some inventor who had made a contribution to mankind. In 1951, at the banquet where the award was given to Roy Plunkett, a DuPont uh, chemist, everyone went home with a muffin pan. Now, that was no ordinary muffin pan. It was a muffin pan that was coated with a miracle substance that Roy Plunkett had accidentally discovered. That substance was Teflon. He wasn't looking for anything that was resistant to grease and resistant to water and was non-stick. No, he was actually looking for a new refrigerant because in those days, sulfur dioxide and ammonia were used in refrigerators. And if you had a leak, that could be a terrible uh, business because these were toxic substances. So he was looking for replacements and he was working with a compound called tetrafluoroethylene. And this was a gas. And one day he wanted to let the gas out of the cylinder in which it was contained and nothing came out, but the cylinder still had the same weight. So he cut it open and he found the white powder. It turned out that the chemical that they'd been working with, tetrafluoroethylene, had linked together with many other such molecules to form a polymer, a long chain, that was called tetrafluoroethylene polymer. Teflon is the name that we gave it, or at least he eventually gave it. And it became immediately useful, of course, because it was non-stick and nothing would react with it. So muffin pans were great and all kinds of other kitchen appliances. And since that time, Teflon has been used innumerably and has been used in, in tapes of all kinds, dental floss, and to put uh, greaseproof coating on, on fabrics. But, you know, there's always a but in science. It turns out that when they started to make more of these fluorinated compounds, stimulated by the workings of Teflon, and they flooded the world with about 5,000 of these compounds called perfluorinated alkyl substances, uh, there was a consequence. We are now finding that these substances persist in the environment. They're called forever chemicals. And some studies have shown that they show up in our bloodstream. And in animals and in cell culture studies, there have been reproductive problems and even some carcinogenicity problems. In fact, quite recently, there was a study in Italy where they looked at teenage boys who had grown up in an area where a factory nearby was producing these substances, and it turned out that they had uh, some differences with boys who did not grow up in that area. For example, they had smaller penises. And as you can imagine, that created a lot of headlines, scary headlines. Well, what are these chemicals in our kitchen that they're talking about? For example, pizza boxes, because pizza boxes are coated with some of these PFASs because, of course, you want them to be grease resistant. And therefore, there's the possibility that the pizza therein will have some of these chemicals. Now, of course, biting into one pizza is going to make a big difference. But the fact is that these are becoming ubiquitous in the environment. And researchers are becoming concerned, and so are regulatory agencies. So they have to be looked into further because of the possible contamination. So when you're biting into a pizza, you may be getting some chemicals that you don't really want, like these perfluoroalkyl compounds, which have been linked with the, uh, uh oh, smaller penises. <laughs>